Thank you. So what I'm, I'm not even going to talk about all this. This part is not necessary. I'm just going to talk very briefly about if you had a data set and you had to estimate some kind of uh, estimate a mechanism that guarantees a specific kind of uh, leakage, how do you do that? OK? So, and I'm going to give you, in the vein of you know, large deviation sample complexity bounds. So this is joint work again with some amazing people. Mario Diaz is a, was a joint postdoc of uh, Flavio and me. He's now back at CMUT. Awesome, awesome mathematician. I learned a lot from him. How is uh, Flavio's student? Of course, there's Flavio, right? So the, just, just to get you a sense of what the problem setting is, we're sort of going to look at a data set where you have a very clear idea of what the sensitive data is. And the rest of the data needs to be uh, published, OK? And you. And you get these um, parts in this data. You get this data. You get n samples, and you're going to figure out how to design a mechanism, right? Um, so guarantees from finite samples. Okay. So here's our formulation. Today it's x. Yesterday it was s. Yesterday it was u. So s is our sensitive variable, and there's um, x, which is correlated with s. And nature determines this uh, joint distribution, right? And um, what we want to find is a mechanism w that x can be mapped to, OK? So w is our privacy mechanism. And OK, sometimes we want these uh, things. All right, so by chosen by design, what we can choose is a measure of leakage, OK? So for this talk, and also you can choose utility. I'm not going to talk about utility. I'm just going to talk about leakage measures, right? So ignore this question. Terrible question, not at all useful. Here's the question of interest. You give me a data set, the first simple thing I can do, which is really hard to do, but I can estimate a distribution on the data set. Right? Given that distribution, um, I can pick some privacy mechanism, right? Pick it at random for this distribution, which means I know the cardinality of this set, I know the cardinality of this set, I'm going to find a mapping. Let's assume everything is discrete. Okay? Now the question is if I knew P and I solved an optimization problem like uh, Aaron wrote on the board, I can determine the actual mechanism, which is a transition matrix, right? How would the guarantees differ if I estimated P versus if I knew P? It's not so hard to see where I'm going here, right? So this sort of leads to how can you find these things in a data domain? OK. Are you restricting your attention to the plugin estimator of P? Yes. And I'll tell you that in a moment. OK? Yeah. Um, so so the, there's really, I, I want to walk towards maximal alpha leakage and therefore maximal leakage, but I'm going to go a little steps. So I start with alpha leakage, which I did not put on the board, so you may not remember, but it was this ratio between what the adversary knew and the denominator versus for a given s, right? And then what the adversary can maximally learn given x hat in the numerator, log of that, and scaling by a factor. All right, so here's my result. Basically, the key idea is as follows. All these measures are Lipschitz in the, the distribution of the data, excess. Okay? Um, that's the first thing I prove. Right? And then, uh, so for example, for alpha leakage, there's this Lipschitz result, locally Lipschitz. I have to be very careful. Locally Lipschitz. So, well, yeah, these are, these are measures that have log and stuff in them, and so you can't really have. Um, Lipschitz everywhere. Locally, Lipschitz means in a bounded interval, you're Lipschitz. Okay. And the bounded interval is basically assuming that we have enough samples that whatever we estimate is close enough. I'll make that clear in a moment. So the second result we use is a result on what's the, the, the bounds and the best plug-in estimator relative to the actual distribution. So the bounds depend on, I mean, these are all uh, large deviations in the which means with with probability 1 minus delta, right? At least 1 minus beta. Um, so x and s is really your data set. So it depends on the, uh, the cardinalities of both of them. 
and then one over, one over square root of n is basically how it's going with the number of samples. So you put this together with this to get the following theorem. Okay. So the key ideas here are always the same, whatever measure I use. Uh, it's a local Lipschianity and a large deviation is an equivalent. So what am I saying here? If you give me a data set with n samples and I estimate the empirical distribution as p hat n, right, from n iid samples drawn from this p, then with probability at least one minus beta, you give me any privacy mechanism w, the leakage measure that I can, uh, the le for this W, the leakage that I can give you from this estimate is bounded away from the actual leakage, if I knew P, by this, uh, yeah, by this term. So this term obviously includes alpha, it includes explicitly this S because S is what we want to keep secret. And then the cardinality of the entire input, which is X and S, and then one over square root of X. This is a negative result, right? Why is it a negative result? I mean, it's it's saying, yeah. It's saying exactly what the cost is going to be for you. The cost seems to be high here. Uh, I mean, yes. It's one over root n. Is it, is it, is it minus? No, but there's the alphabet. There's s, the cardinality of s times the cardinality of x. Um, yes, it is minus log beta. Yeah. How is the size of like s times x compared to log beta? I mean, like, those seem to be different units, right? Like, um, uh, okay, so this is a great question. Uh, okay, so if if you wanted really, uh, if you wanted beta to be ten to the minus seven, maybe even better. Why are you nodding? Your, why are you shaking your head, Aaron? That means one minus ten to the minus seven probabilistic guarantee. That's pretty high. But if you had an image and you still went into a very high feature space, this could potentially be much larger than seven. So I really think this is the dominant term, huh? Yeah, that is like the uh, I, I, the cardinality of the alphabet is a feature of using the plug-in and estimator. Yes. I think the interesting result also, I mean, it's worth highlighting the lemma on the top because that's kind of the basis, the dynamics here, like Lalita said, is that you see how these metrics vary on their small perturbations, and that approximation guarantee in terms of total variation, you could try to drive that using other estimators. Yes, you'd only do better. But I, I, I only do better. Are we looking, again, uh, sorry, this is just, when we're looking at a w, w here is like the, I'm not the margin, yeah, the, is the, the randomized process, yes, right? Yes, correct. That's staying fixed. Mm -hmm. So when alpha goes to infinity? Uh, that's a special case of this. This is just, this alpha just is, uh, coming from choosing any, um, okay, this is, I should have put up what L alpha is. It's a measure. Pardon? I didn't even hear his question. Uh, when alpha goes to infinity, the Lipschitz constant should be zero, right? It's not supposed to depend on the input distribution? That's for maximal. That's our maximal. Supreme, this is just, when alpha goes to infinity, this is just the ratio of the probability of error given something divided by the original probability of error. Ah. She has the S dependence here, it's for particular S. That will also show up later, but. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, sorry, so. so all, I'm, all I'm saying is, it sort of addresses your question. If maybe you didn't even want to estimate maximum leakage, you wanted to estimate Infinity leakage, but for this particular secret S, uh, so the key you wanted to hide, this is the cost. Infinity is not max leakage. Correct. Got it. It's, uh, yeah, it's just the Arimoto mutual information of order infinity. It's just probability of guessing. It's Correct. like the change in the multiplicative increase in the probability of guessing. Correct. Log of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Got it. Okay, thanks. Very good. Okay. So now I can do this for. Um, L Simpson, and then I can do it for maximal alpha leakage. Okay? 
Now, it's very interesting. These are really, you know, this is Arimoto mutual information. This is Sipson mutual information. This is the maximum of Arimoto and Sipson. Something very strange happens because these measures are slightly different, right? So this is what you get for Sipson. For Sipson, uh, this is the Lipschianity behavior. So you estimate Sipson at two for two different input distributions. It really depends on the probability of the least likely symbol of the secret. This is the sensitive variable, OK? Um, and then when you do this in the uh, maximal case, it's similar, but now the alphabet size of s also comes into play. Because, it, it, because of the way you're taking this maximum, uh, when you work out the details, you have no choice. But So if s was binary, it, this is not a big cost. But if F, s becomes large, this can become problematic. So yes? So, so L max here is not quite maximal leakage, I guess, because you've been training the alphabet of s. Uh, uh, alpha equals infinity is maximal leakage. OK, so take alpha, alpha equals to infinity, but you have a constraint on the alphabet size of s. Do I have a constraint on the alphabet size of S? Yeah, I mean, they're all discrete at this point. Uh, but uh, if alpha equals infinity, uh, well, well, if alpha equals infinity, this becomes four times absolute value uh, cardinality of S divided by MS, right? Yeah, there's no, it's I guess in the original definition of maximum leakage, there's no S uh, in uh, the problem. So, um, uh, actually, uh, no, 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 no. So this uh, so great, great question, great question. What we're looking at here is L S to X hat. You're hiding all possible functions of the secret, not L X to X hat. Uh, X oh, okay. L, uh, uh, L as oh, so I call it. Q is a joint distribution on secret and X. What what is Q a distribution on? Q is, yes, Q is a, uh, so you can say that X and S are jointly distributed as Q. Yeah. Yes, correct. So if I had to design a mechanism, I still will use my ground truth to design the mechanism. So you assume you're doing this on a training data set, so you have X and S. Yeah, the thing I was trying to see if fit, uh, I remember that max leakage, as uh, Aaron defined it, is, is independent of the of Q, of, of the, in the distribution on X. And I was wondering if that sort of shows up, but I, I guess it doesn't just because of the particular formulation. It's fine. Uh, so because it's from S to X hat, it, what's coming in here is when I'm estimating, uh, so the, I wish I had my, I should have put those slides up. Uh, what Sipson does is the following. Sipson is, a, is, is sort of a centroid of the conditional distributions. So how well you estimate the least likely determines how it's very crucial to estimating this measure well. Mm -hmm. And that is why that appears. It doesn't appear in Arimoto. And it's very weird, because Arimoto sort of averages that up. Now I understand what my question is. OK. The question is, is this tight? Like, is, it, is this in the worst case over Q1 and Q2 condition on the size of S? Not conditioned on, but for a given size of S, is this like are these bounds actually tight? Well, that, I that think is, you should be careful about I that. I think these are actually tight in the sense because if I'm doing uh, uh, locally Lipschitz, pretty much Q1 and Q2 are assumed to be close enough to each other that N is uh, that I I can hopefully estimate. So that another way to put it is we assume that. The data set is such that the least likely symbol can be estimated. I have enough. I'll save my question for later. It's OK. So are you thinking in a like minimax estimation? Right this is not, right? This is, this is not minimax. Is there a lower bound? What would the lower bound look like? It, it's a large deviations bound. There is no, no lower bound on this. Uh, so just to be clear, for, um, for this lemma, for this Lipschitz, uh, they're in simple binary cases. Um, we, we get to recover some of the constants. Mm -hmm. But is it tight in general, like especially in terms of the dependence on the size of the alphabet? Um, I'm not sure we know that for sure. At least, uh, at least with this result of Wiseman, this is what we can get. I think there are much better uh, estimators you can put in. Yeah, yeah, but this result is even before using the large deviations. It just tells you about yeah. small perturbations of the underlying things. And, yeah. uh, so it all, uh, 
So uh, if, the, if the question is, can we get a better constant or something like that, um, in general, I, I don't, like, or we can come up with simple examples where this bound matches uh, what you find in that example, like with some binary channels and so on. I think we have that in the paper. So this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So this is the, the ultimate, uh, the, the, the idea behind this is, is it is really local ellipses. So how well we capture those constants depends on what range we look at, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all right, so just, just to be very clear, this is alpha strictly greater than one. I should have said that right up front. Um, so you can't do this for mutual information. Uh, you have, um, you'd have a log in and the numerator and so on. Uh, so the basic proof ideas are um, certainly this is where we start with the Arimoto. You're using these generalized mean inequalities because these are norms, right? These are any um, measures. And then you use all these cute little inequalities to do the bound. All right. So I should have put one more theorem which went to the, the result on this, but that's not there. But you plug that in and you get the same result. Um, in in John Ducci's uh, 2012 paper, he has something very close to this one. On uh, minimax so estimate? What he does is, before, before you do the minimax whole problem, something like this. Let's say you take the KL distance between two distributions, and you try to relate it under, let's say, different mobile differential privacy to the total variation distance between them. Um, and it seems to me that it's very, very related to this, did you, by any chance? Uh, oh, that's a good pointer. Yeah, can you, I'm sorry. It uses exactly the same machinery. I mean, once you get total variation between distributions, you, you, found you can that. bound the, the world except. Yeah, but his, I mean, he's looking, he uses kale for doing a hypothesis test, right? I mean, is he doing this wrong? And then he does total variation. You do lots of things with that. Yeah, but this, so, so okay, just the reason I clarify is, there are only two elements to this bound, right? I mean, this we're saying we're in a regime where you know that these two are living in some bounded space. They're not so far away from each other, right? Then how exactly these constants tell me how the function of that behaves, and then I'm just, you can take your favorite best plug and play estimator. I, did he do something more precise? In, in, did he use a better plug and estimator, or did he do something? Well, we can discuss that. Because KL works differently from some of these measures, so you have to be more careful about that. Any other questions? Thank you. So we're mostly done. Uh, thanks for coming. And we're open to all kinds of comments, feedback, constructive criticism, and so on. By the way, for, for alpha equals one, which information this doesn't